What is going on guys, I'm Adriano and this video is about how to create a date column from a date time column using AWS Glue Studio. If you're unsure what AWS Glue Studio is, check out my overview video in the description below. So you might have records coming in as date time and you might want to be able to create a date column to potentially create a partition to make the querying of your data more efficient in S3. So I have data of New York taxi trips by date time and if I query this data, after the query runs, what you're going to see here is that it took 4.5 seconds and it had to scan 384 megabytes of data. So I actually had to go through my entire data set to find data between these date time ranges. Now, if I had a partition by date, actually the query would have to scan a lot less data. So we're going to go through how to create this in Glue Studio. So the first step here is you're going to have to import your data into your job. So my data was coming from S3. You're going to have to select your database. You're going to have to select the table and then you're going to see your output here. So what we're going to be using to create this date column is from this pickup underscore date time, which is a timestamp. So after you add your data, the next step is to add a transform node. And unfortunately, there isn't already a transform that exists to create a date from a date time column. So we're going to go to add a custom transform. So after you select custom transform, you're going to go to the transform tab and now we're going to have to add some custom spark code to do this. So you can actually add the first line of code. This already is added by AWS Glue Studio. And the first step here is we need to select the data frame from the data frame collection. So what happens is it first creates a dynamic frame collection. So our first line of code here is to select the first data set. There's only one data frame in this collection, but we're going to have to say zero to data frame. So what this does is it now converts our data frame collection to select the first data frame in that collection. Now the next line of code, I created a variable called data frame with date. And what we're going to be doing is using the with column function, we're going to be creating a new variable called pickup date. And we are telling it it's coming from this pickup date time column. We're going to basically be casting it to a date column. So because this is a date time, we're basically saying, hey, please cast this to be a date. Now, this is all we had to do to create a new date column. So the next component here is to create a dynamic frame from this data frame. So we're going to be using the from data frame function to do that. So what we're saying is, okay, using this variable here um, with the glue context, and it's going to be the name, this is optional, it's going to be transform underscore date. And the last line of code is basically returning it to a dynamic frame collection. So why did I do this? Well, if we actually check the AWS documentation here, it says the code should take one or more dynamic frames as input and return it as a collection of data frames. All right, so once that is done here, that is all we have to do uh, for the transform component. Now the last step, and this is important not to forget, is you need to manually add in that new variable. So you have to go to edit and you need to um, go to add root key. And here I already went ahead and added it. So it is pickup underscore date as a date. And as you see, we still have our uh, old date time pickup date column that exists there. Then you're gonna have to hit apply. So once that is done, you should see a nice green check mark. And now the next component is, um, you know, we're theoretically ready to write, but there's one extra step we have to do is we need to add another transform called select from collection. And this one already exists. Uh, you can select it from the dropdown list at from node type under the transform section. And basically we're letting glue know which dynamic frame we want to select. And we are selecting um, the zero index. So that is the only one that exists there and output schema that looks good. And now finally, we're just gonna select our right output location. So what I did here is I select glue parquet format. You can select whatever format you want. And now you can select the compression, select your S3 target location if you're writing to S3. So now for that partition option, I can select that new pickup date variable that I just created. And now I should be able to save and run that job. Um, I've already run this, so I'm not going to run it again. 
Now I'm going to quickly show you the difference in query time by running that between the old and new data set. So this was my first query. Um, as you can see here, the data scanned is 384 megabytes. When you re-add the data into AWS Glue Catalog, you should now see a partitioned uh, column here, and it tells you which uh, column is being used as the partition. So now if I use that partitioned column to run my query, And after this finishes, what do you see here? You know, it took around the same time. However, it only scanned 12.2 megabytes. So imagine this was billions of records. You would actually save a lot of money by having a lot less records to scan because AWS Athena charges you based on the amount of records scanned. So I hope this video was helpful and you now know how to create a date column from a date time column using AWS Glue Studio. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on my next data integration tutorial. See you next time.